Well, hello, my beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel if you're returning and if you are new, welcome to you as well. This is Christine, your DIY craftaholic. This video is a part of five under five for March and we're starting right now. So for our first inspiration, this home sign is from the Dollar Tree. I'm just using a piece of masking tape to cover that four beaded section because I don't want to get any paint on that part. And once I covered that, I took some Beverly celery and painted the home section. And I'm just using a piece of sponge. I find that using the sponge spread the paint a lot more easier than the brush. And now it's all dried. I took some white paint and this is folk art wicker white and painted out the home suite or the sweet home section. And I gave that two good coats and then dried it with the heat gun. I then removed the tape from the section that covered the beads. I got this pack of, of spring transfers from Amazon and I have these linked in my Amazon store down below if you'd like to check that out if you are interested. So I selected the one with the three mason jars and it says hello spring and I just rub that on there. Now I'm taking this a little bit further. I decided that I wanted a little bit more embellishment. So I took the fine point marker and just gave some stitch lines around that. And then afterwards I took the same marker and just dotted the white part in the middle to give it more definition. And then I applied some Mod Podge using a sponge brush just to seal the paint in. And for further embellishment, I took a piece of jute cord and I'm just running it through those holes around the O. And I brought the ends to the back, bring them on top of the O, glue them down at the top and then tie a knot. And then took this burlap bow, glue that down on top of the knot to cover it. And this little sign is done. I love it guys. Let me know what you think about this one. This is five under five dollars. What this really is, is you make five DIYs under five dollars. And the theme is spring and Easter decor. This challenge is hosted by Emily from Farm Charm Chic. And her guest host this month is Shannon from Shannon's Crafty DIYs. We'll leave the links to their channels in my description box below, as well as the playlist. And I'll also link the playlist below the video for easy access. Guys, make sure to check out the entire playlist. It is filled with lots of Easter and spring decor. So now we're moving on to DIY number two. This is a pack of wooden coasters that I got from Plaid. So I removed them from the pack, sanded them down using the sanding block, then took a piece of rag and just dusted off the sand dust or the sawdust. And here they are. Now I painted them with two coats of Waverly Ivory and now they're dry. I got this transfer. This is heat transfer or heat vinyl transfer. I purchased this in a pack. From Amazon this is also linked in my Amazon storefront this was a really good deal when I purchased this I have been using these heat transfers for a while now but because this one has the daisies on there and they're small enough I decided to just separate them and use them for the coaster so what is the cost of this DIY no although I got the coasters free the coasters are sold at Dollar Tree. You can purchase them there. You can also purchase transfers, rub on transfers or heat transfers from the Dollar Tree. And this pack that I got from Amazon, it's really cost effective as well because it came with 16 sheets of different sizes. And the cost for that was maybe $16.99, I believe. And I'm only using four from this pack of nine. So these cost pennies. This was made for, for fabric, but I'm, your girl is trying them everywhere. 
I will link a video at the top to show you how I transferred this onto cushion using my HTV Runt heat press. You can check that one out. But I wanted to try this to see how it would work on the wood and it worked perfectly. Perfectly. So I've tried it on fabric, I've tried it on canvas and now I'm trying it on wood and all three surfaces are perfect for this transfer. I probably might try it on glass next. Now I'm going to stamp on the word spring. So I took the rubber stamp from Dollar Tree. I cut out the, the letters to spell spring and now I'm stamping them on. And this one, I didn't realize that the smile was turned the other way. So I stamped it incorrectly. So I just used some of the paint, painted that out and then re-stamped it. And when it dried, I used dishwasher safe Mod Podge to seal everything in and then dry it with, with my heat gun. Now I wanted a little bit more definition or embellishment. So I took the furniture marker. This one is mahogany, I believe, or walnut, it's walnut. And I'm just drawing some lines along the edges of the wood. And as I am doing the voiceover for this, my doorbell rang. And when I went to check, HTV Rant has sent me the hat press. Oh yes, yeah. so I'll be doing an unboxing video for that. So stay tuned. And that's it for this one, guys. Quick, easy, and simple. More of that in the final reveal. Now we're moving on to inspiration number three. I'll be using this picture frame that I got from Michael's for 99 cents. And I removed the paper and then removed the backing. And then I painted it with a coat of Waverly Celery. And I'm not being too heavy on the paint because like you see that napkin to my right, that's what I'll be using to decoupage on the frame. And then I dried it a little bit with some heat. And next I took some Mod Podge and I'm going to be spreading the Mod Podge very thin and allow it to get a little tacky. Then I place the napkin down and I will do that until I cover the entire frame. If you are new to my channel or coming over from the playlist, welcome. I'm so happy you joined me today. Here on my channel, I do DIYs on a budget, dupes, look for less, and thrift flips. If you love budget-friendly DIYs like these and you have not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing and be sure to hit that notification bell. Hit it again and select all so YouTube notifies you whenever I upload new videos. So after covering the entire frame with a napkin, I then took the parchment paper, laid that on top of it and used a heat press to reactivate the Mod Podge and to seal it. And then I took the scissors and just cut out that middle part and then the emery board and just file off the excess in a downward motion. So let me take a quick minute here to say thank you to my awesome subscribers. Big up yourself. You guys are awesome. And if you are new here, consider subscribing. I truly do appreciate your support. All right. So now that we have that done, I'm going over the frame with a little bit more Mod Podge. And this helps to seal the napkin in. And now for the inside piece, I traced out the cardboard on a piece of foam board. And that's going to serve as an insert. I got these stickers from my friend Tammy. Tammy, I love these stickers. So what I'm doing, I'm just cutting out this. Uh, this is actually a scripture verse. Call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. And that's in Jeremiah. And I'm also cutting out that little church. I'm going to use that. And I'm going to use this little birdie. And this little flowers that's on here now these stickers you have to rub them on it's not as soft as the transfer stickers so you have to, you have to apply a little bit of pressure so once i lay them down as to how i wanted to place them on the foam board i now peel off the top part and place that down and then i'm going to take the craft stick and just gently rub i'm not applying too much pressure because this, remember this is foam 
and the pressure that you apply will will leave an impression on the foam board the top part the scripture was proving very difficult to come off the top piece would not come off in other words the word the words were not transferring to the foam board so i just left it but then i i transferred the others on and those went on quite easy and then i just placed it back in the middle and used the clamp to clamp it down so I took a little antique wax on the dry chippy brush, just remove the excess on a damp paper towel, and then just distress the edges. And glued on a little burlap bow at the top. And this little sign is done. And this beautiful frame is under a dollar because the frame is 99 cents and everything else I already had. I love this one. On to inspiration number four. I'll be using three of these wooden hearts that I got in a pack of 16 from Michaels and those paints. Before I painted the hearts, I took some painter's tape and I'm just arbitrarily uh, marking off small sections. Those sections are going to be painted in different colors. Now they're all painted and dried. I removed the tape and I'm placing that on the other side of the marking because where the tape was that part is going to be painted with the mocha so here they are looking oh so pretty already i could not resist doing a spring version you guys love the one that i did for my valentine's video so i had to bring them back <laughs> so here i am using the same stickers i used earlier i'm just going through to select the one that look would look Good on here and would fit perfectly and these are the ones I chose so I'm peeling the back off placing them down and using the craft stick to just rub them on and then of course remove the top layer and these are beautiful so beautiful and then I went over them with some Mod Podge and that's just to seal everything in And of course, I had to take it a step further, so I took a piece of lace ribbon. I'm just placing, gluing down the lace ribbon on the middle part where I had used the mocha. If you would like to follow me on social media or to connect with me outside of YouTube, you can scan that QR code and that will take you to my Linktree address in my description box below. And there you will find all of the links that you can reach me at. Next, I flip them over. I'm now going to glue on the hanger. I took a piece of this ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gluing that at the back to connect all three hearts. And that's about it. Here it is, more in the final reveal. Now let's jump into inspiration number five. This is a project I did for fall and I'm going to be using the reverse side. So what I did, I tried to remove the paper by just peeling it off. That wasn't working. So I sprayed some water on there, placed a piece of napkin over it and sat it aside to soak. And this is what it looks like after soaking and removing the paper. Now I'm going to go over that with a coat of the same wicker white. Now that dried. I'm taking this very beautiful napkin that I got from my friend May and I'm only going to use just this one panel with these lovely little chickies on here. So I remove the back layer and just to make sure that it was sitting perfectly in the space. I didn't like the straight edge at the bottom where the grass was so I just peeled off that extra green panel to give it a jagged edge. And to kind of balance it a little bit, I took off the top two corners. <laughs> and of course, as I always do napkin decoupage, I applied the, the Mod Podge using a sponge, spread that thin until it got very tacky, and then place the napkin over it. And I continued on until I completed the entire board. This one cost me free. <laughs> I didn't have to buy anything for this one so now that was done I took the parchment paper and the heat press 
reactivated the Mod Podge to seal everything in and then went over it again with a little bit more Mod Podge and then the heat gun to seal that. And to give it a little bit more definition, I took the chippy brush with a little Waverly Antique Wax and just dis distress the edge. Next, I took a bow that I made from this gingham ribbon that I got from BB Craft, glue that at the top left corner. And then to balance out this piece and to turn it into a riser, because yes, that's what I'm making, a riser. <laughs> I took a large bead, cut that in halves and used some wood glue and hot glue and glued that down on the back. I also tapped down the string so it's not showing when it's being used as a riser. If fall comes and I decide to use this as a wall decor, I just pull up the string and it becomes a wall decor again. This also had one of those beaded metal pumpkin on here and I took that off. So that's why it's looking so bare. And here we are for the final reveal, guys. Let me know what you think about these five under five DIYs. Each costing me under $5 to make. And I'm sure you can take the inspiration from this and do the same. Don't forget to check out the host channels. That's Emily. Farm Charm Chic and Shannon from Shannon's Crafty DIYs. Their links are in the description box below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so before you leave and let me know also which one was your favorite in the comments down below. And if you love budget friendly content like this one and would like to see more, I suggest this video right here or this playlist. And stay safe, my friends, until my next one. Bye.